This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and clearly this is not mobile. We don't usually review desktops. We do a lot of gaming laptops, and we will be doing a lot of gaming laptops because the NVIDIA RTX graphics refresh is coming for laptops starting this week. But I thought this would be very interesting. HP offered to send us a review loaner of my new little friend over here, the HP Omen Obelisk with an NVIDIA RTX 2080 card in there. That's a very expensive, fast new card. It supports ray tracing and other nifty things. So as a baseline of comparison, for those of you who are still maybe thinking, should I get a high-end gaming laptop or even a mid-range gaming laptop or a desktop? This one here is one of the more intriguing of the desktops because it used to be if you bought a gaming desktop from one of the big manufacturers, everything was sort of proprietary, not easily upgradable. And part of the reason you buy a gaming desktop is because if a next year a new graphics card comes out, yeah, it's easy to do. If you want to reconfigure your storage, it's easier to do with with something like this, even if the CPU, you want to upgrade the CPU, assuming generationally com they're compatible from generation to generation, or you go with the Core i5 and they want to go up to Core i7, you can do that with this. Those are all sorts of things that you really can't do with the laptop. So we're going to look at it now. Of course, a powerful desktop is something that you might use for more than gaming, right? So what if you're doing a video editor, you're doing 4K video, even 8K if you're talking about RTX 2080, or you're just your average home consumer and maybe you have video from this iPhone, the new ATVC video codec. It's not compatible with your PC or with somebody else's and you want to share video, or you have an older library of DivX content, AVI, Wondershare, and their video converter ultimate are their sponsor for this episode. Thanks so much, Wondershare. So they have a converter from the name you can guess that converts just about everything to something else. It's really very handy, particularly if you do have a library of either cutting edge iPhone videos or some older videos in your library that you want to convert and share. And with the desktop this powerful, well, you can take anything that comes from this iPhone or Android phone and convert it very quickly. It can also do things like download content from user generated content sites. It does DVD burning, Blu-ray burning, it has some video editing capabilities as well. Pretty powerful stuff. Back to our review. So one of the potential benefits of using a desktop instead of a gaming laptop is they do tend to be quieter because, well, duh, look at all the space here. This is a mini tower, so it's not even that huge a tower as they go. And I'm sitting right by the exhaust fan right now and the power supply fan, and you're probably not hearing much, even though my microphone's like six inches away from that. Now, when gaming with this, you'll hear the fans, you know, especially if you're doing 4K gaming, which I like to do now that I've tested out this setup. Uh, you'll hear the fans, but it's not like you would hear with your average gaming laptop where everybody is going to be hearing your fan and you're going to have to put headphones on. Beyond that, it's the upgradability. The fact that with this, you can pop out your CPU, you can pop out the GPU and upgrade those after the fact. Generally, with laptops, this is not something that you can do, right? I, in terms of the amount of stuff that you can upgrade, it's not so different from your average fairly mid-sized gaming laptop chassis though, because this is a micro ATX motherboard. It has HP branding on it. So you've got two RAM slots, not four. You're gonna have to go for a bigger kind of motherboard with not micro ATX size duh, in there. So that means now that there are 32 gig DIMMs, you could go up to 64 gigs of RAM, still only two slots to work with, which is pretty typical for gaming laptops too. This has one, M.2 PCIe NVMe slot for a fast SSD. Just one. There are gaming laptops like Alienware and stuff like that that have two and a gigabyte Aero 15. You get the idea. And there's another M.2 slot that's for the Wi Fi card in here. But still, you've got two hard drive bays, two three and a half inch hard drive bays, or you can put two and a half inch drives in with brackets. You can pop out that CPU, you can pop out that graphics card. So you went started out with something lower end because you can only afford the GTX 1060, but you know you're saving for that 2070 or 2080 card in the future. You can do that. You're not giving up anything when it comes to RGB lighting either. As you can see, the case here is lit up, which is kind of cool, subtle LEDs, and you can program it. You've got several different lighting effects and you can choose which colors you want, or you could turn it off, which would be kind of sad. Now the lighting effect comes along with this clear case option, which is like $25 to get this clear door right here, and it even has EMI shielding on it, so in theory to reduce any interference from the components that are inside. When it comes to the chassis ventilation on this, you've got 
a very large area intake here. The whole top is. Now the whole bottom just about is too, but there's no feet on this case, which is pretty weird. So I, how much air can be sucking from down there? I don't know. There are filters, which is a good thing, especially on the bottom in case it is managing to suck something up because all your dust is usually kind of down low. And on the back, we have a standard size fan going on. And of course the power supply has its own fan. I have no complaints actually about that because this is a fairly big area to cool the components inside. This is an Intel 8th generation Core i7-8700 CPU. That's 3.2 gigahertz, 4.6 gigahertz is turbo boost. Now you can also get this with a Core i5-8400 and there's an AMD Ryzen 5. Kind of, that's kind of one of the lower end offerings. And that actually comes with an NVIDIA GTX 1060 3 gigabyte card, a little bit low on the VRAM there. So it's interesting they're mixing NVIDIA and AMD there. And the lowest actually starts around $919. That's with the Core i5 and a GTX 1050 card. So this is something we're going to see in gaming laptops and in gaming desktops for a while, in part because NVIDIA had a wild oversupply of last generation GTX 10 series cards. They made so many because of all the Bitcoin crypto miners out there. And then, well, that market kind of fell through. So there's going to be a lot of these cards on the market to save a little bit of money. If you're going to be doing 1080p gaming, a 10 series card is still fine. The biggest improvements that we're seeing with this RTX 2080 card is when you amp up the resolution. If you're, if you're doing 1080p gaming in today's AAA titles, for example, we're going to demo Shadow of the Tomb Raider, otherwise known as New Ray Tracing Tomb Raider, and Resident Evil Remake, Resident Evil 2, games like that, Far Cry 5, you'll see maybe 10% increase in frame rates at 1080p. That's not really worth buying a card that costs $800 if you're doing a build to order when you pick that to put in this chassis. Huh. But if you move that up to 4K, which is really a struggle for something like an NVIDIA GTX 1080 card to do at reasonable frame rates, here with the 2080 card, I was getting 45 to 60 frames per second. And if you are playing something like Resident Evil 2 Remake or The Shadow of the Tomb Raider, th those frame rates are just fine. And it looks pretty nice and pretty smooth. If you're being competitive in first-person shooters, you're still wanting 60 frames and above. That probably isn't going to happen in a lot of games just yet. But overall, Boy, things do look nice at 4K. If you have a monitor like this, this is just your basic two-year-old 27-inch LG 4K IPS monitor, by the way. Nothing too fancy here. So while, while this might start pretty affordably at $919 or around $1,000 if you go with that Ryzen option with a GTX 1060 card, a configuration like ours, which has that Core i7-8700 processor, the RTX 2080 card, 16 gigs of DDR4, 2666 megahertz HyperX RAM inside, a 256 gig NVMe boot SSD, and a 2 terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. Yay, it's the faster kind of hard drive. That list price on HP's website is around $2,100. Street price is more like $1,899. This past Christmas time, we saw it dropping as low as $1,500 on crazy Black Friday sales. So you get the idea of the pricing there. Now, let's change from the previous generation of the Omen Obelisk, for those of you who are familiar, which isn't that much older, honestly, earlier in 2018. Really, the big change is the top ports here. We have USB ports, for example, and audio ports, and they used to be facing backwards, so they face forwards now. Yeah. The back ports are, by the way, lit. The LED lighting shows through on the ports, which is really great. So you've got plenty of USB Type A 3.0 ports. You have a USB-C port, Gen 2. It's not Thunderbolt 3. But then again, it's a little less important for desktops. You don't need a docking station, for example, and you've already got plenty of monitor output because you've got that NVIDIA card in the back with all the monitor outputs on it. The power supply on this is a 500 watt bronze power supply. If you go with one of the very low end models that has lower power requirements, it's going to be a 300 watt. It's a bone standard kind of power supply. So if you want to upgrade that later on for a more powerful card, you can do that. Opening this up is super easy. There's one little internal access button here and the side pops right off, be it the glass door option or the metal door option, and then the world is your oyster. It's very cleanly laid out. It's very easy to access everything. This is an air-cooled system. This is not an overclockable CPU. That option should be coming later this year for those of you who really want that sort of thing. So once you open it up, pretty easy to get to everything. It's not all crammed up in there. I would suggest, however, upgrading this stock Intel cooler that's on here. It's not super effective. I was a little surprised coming from uh, laptops where I complain when the core temperatures go up into the low 90s or mid 90s when gaming. Well, this one did that. Uh, several of the cores were in the upper 80s centigrade and I had one core that kept going up to about 93 centigrade when I was playing 
well, 4K AAA titles. I do admit that. So I think that an aftermarket cooler, something a little beefier would be effective. I don't think you really need to go with something like water cooling for this particular processor. When you get the overclockable one, yeah, maybe then. But yeah, air cooling would be sufficient, but I would consider doing that. This comes with a everyday, like you get with any HP PC kind of keyboard and mouse. In fact, actually, I'm actually using that mouse because they sent us the gaming mouse, but it is made for right-handed people, and I'm left-handed. But the, the keyboard I have swapped out for their higher-end mechanical keyboard, and let me tell you, it's got the noisier kind of switches. You can probably hear from here. Nice, noisy mechanical keyboard. I really actually like this. It's very easy to clean compared to your average mechanical keyboard. It's got a very flat deck. The keyboards rise up above it, so you can blow compressed in there and whatever. And it's also got backlighting, and you can control the color scheme using the HP control panel to do that. In terms of performance, well, I mean, that's what it's about, right? The thing really does rock, I have to say. Like I said, I really got into 4K gaming with this for the first time ever, honestly. The RTX 2080 card in this is HP brand. It has a single big fan on it, but temperatures on the card were fine. Even pushing it with 4K gaming, it, I never saw the temperature of the GPU go up above 65 degrees. I didn't overclock the GPU on this. You, you could go to town and try to do that if you want. It's not an overclockable CPU, but like I said, the big difference is going to be when you're going higher resolutions. These days, people are buying widescreen gaming monitors, 1440p monitors, even 4K monitors, and that really is the sweet spot for something like this. Otherwise, just go with the, the GTX 1080 model, save yourself some money, or 1070 model. But with the 2080 on this, 4K gaming, like I said, as long as you go to 45 to 60 frames per second in the most demanding titles like Shadow of the Tomb Raider for example, in Far Cry 5. Very good stuff here. If you're just playing a 1080p resolution, like I said, 10% frame rate increase, it's not a lot to talk about. So every AAA title today is going to play at over 100 frames per second on Ultra, to give you an, an example. For the 4K gaming, we had it set to high. So yeah, I mean, this pretty much rocks. This is going to be one of the more powerful systems that you can get if you're going for a pre-built system. Speaking of which, yes, you could still build your own. I used to always build my own gaming desktops, but the thing is with this, you get a very reusable chassis and bone standard components is easy to upgrade. So you're not saving a whole super lot of money anymore, especially given the fact that the RTX cards are so expensive. When you're looking at a high-end card like the 2080 card, the price really works out pretty well and saves you the headache. And if you're the kind of person that's thinking about gaming laptop versus desktop, you're probably maybe not thinking about tearing things apart and upgrading anyway, because that's something you really can't do a whole lot of with a laptop. So that's the HP Omen Obelisk with Intel 8th generation CPUs inside and NVIDIA RTX cards available. Like I said, you can still get this with last generation GTX cards to save yourself some money if you want to. And if you're going to be doing 1080p gaming with the 1080p monitor, that makes sense. But the RTX 2080 card is the thing you want if you want to do 4K gaming. Honestly, I haven't done a lot of 4K gaming. I game a lot. But because of this, I've started doing 4K gaming. And for the latest titles, again, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Man, it does look sweet. So as gaming desktops go, I know we haven't reviewed a lot of these for you to compare, but I have to say I do like this a lot for the value proposition in terms of upgradability. It's not proprietary. It's not annoying. It's all very standard parts, even the power supply. If you want to upgrade that from a 500 watt, I don't know why you would need to. Maybe another graphics card is going to come along and it needs more power. You could actually do that. So that's pretty sweet. It's good looking. It's gamery, but not too flashy. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? It, it's pretty well done. The ventilation on this, it might not be an intake fan, but it's got massive intake everywhere on this. And the temperatures weren't a problem except for the kind of wimpy stock Intel cooler. It would be neat to see this one with an overclockable CPU, and that should be coming. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, including gaming stuff, and thumbs up if you like this vid.